Yeah, so they, they contribute their lion's share. You can clearly see in health, you know, 4% downward. In there. So when we say 4% downward in health, it's not affecting health workers. It's affecting administrators. Yeah, so I mean, it's not affecting, we are protecting the whole health teaching people who are staying in the classroom. If for some reason a secretary in a school was paid at a very high rate than is normal, that person will see, that secretary will see a downward in the health sector. I mean, it's, it's a painful reform, but it's something you bite the bullet, you hit the round, and you look forward to face the future of growth. With stronger revenues, we can restore these. Over. And the other point we don't want to make is that most of the people who are down should be going up, but because we don't have the money, they can't go up. On a graduated basis, they will continue to go up. All right? So we can minimize the gap. As we speak, gap is still there between some of the ministries that had the reform first, because it's not possible to take somebody from Ministry of Finance all the way down to the Almanac, because they were, they were, they were high up. For some reason, we, you know, they were higher. NIC, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Gender, and uh, CSA, their salaries were way up. So even if people are coming down, you don't want to bring those people all the way down to Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So this is what has happened. You hang them in the middle, hope that Ministry of Foreign Affairs with, with graduate salary and economy improvement catches up, and then, but there's still a gap between the paper. It's more reasonable now. And it's fairer than, than has been the case. Move next. Okay, so this, so this still gives a sense of what we're talking about in terms of the reductions. So, patients involved here, uh, and you, I mean, you have the authority to, to think about these things. We also want to think about how do we, how do we push on them. This is a proposal to say, the people who are coming down, we can look at, look at, look for windfall revenue, and a push on it to them to push on their impact. Some of these people have loans. Some of them stop, and so the proposal. These are different proposals that, that that's uh, up for your approval to see how. Because at the end of the day, my the idea would not be to in, we go already at 19 million financing gap, and to, to the best of my knowledge, the revenue discussion says it has identified an additional, I believe, either 11 million just on the back of the envelope. That is new money that we did not see. When we submitted the budget, National Port Authority was captured at seven million. The National Port Authority is bringing in ten million. And let me tell, let me say this: the National Port Authority is a remarkable success story under the president. When we took office, National Port Authority was contributing two or three million to the budget. In the first year, the National Port Authority contributed five million to the budget. That was a job. Then this budget year, we captured for them seven million. So they're doing two million more than the five they did in the budget. In the negotiation, the president has decided because of the situation, many of the capital projects at the port should hold on, let these entities bring the money on budget. That has moved their contribution to 10. So when you take, when you take NPA, for example, from two million budget contribution to 10 million, that's a massive fiscal transformation. That's a success story that must be celebrated. This is the kind of thing that you know, doing. So when you do all of that, the, the 10 million extra, we're finding 11 million, we'll close the financing gap of 7 million that we had. So just from a financing side, if we're doing nothing else, for, you know, for the program perspective, once we find 7 million new revenue, we find with the budget. We find, we pass a credible balanced budget whose gap is closed, not by, not by borrowing. As it stands now, we have a 19 million hole. So 10 million additional revenue will only solve that by, uh, you still gotta give a 9 million to look for new money. And where that new money will come from is difficult. We can't borrow because to get into an IMF program, to get the support, let me say this, the IMF program will give us a balance of payment support. So the money used will, will protect our reserves and protect the new monetary framework that we are putting in place uh, in, 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 with IMF. So we don't want to compromise that. So if we if we let in the whole, so this kind of money here, we can put it in the budget. Because if we put it in the budget, 19 plus, for example, 5 million, we carry us home, 24 million, and then you have a 24 million where you need to find new revenue. Windfall is not accepted as a revenue source, meaning anything that does not happen every year is not a good revenue source. You could, for example, get 100 million because of oil block something, that's fine. But that 100 million is not going to come every year for the next five years. 
So we're looking at whole revenue that will continue to come to support the budget and base our budget and die down. Aid is declining in Liberia because of the climate. 